Hi guys, so I have been spinning, I don't know how many hundreds of hours on this wheel. I got it last year and it is a Krom Kromsky Symphony. I really love it and I wanted to show you. So I have been making the drive band just out of jute string. The problem with the jute string is that in order to get it to hold, you have to form a knot that is quite bulbous and unfriendly to the spinning wheel itself because every time that knot goes over the the um, the bobbin the the drive band where it goes over the bobbin it goes glump and it causes duh, 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 and you don't want that so I actually have an order in for a real drive band if I could figure out how to tie a knot in this that would hold that was smoother, I totally would. I think part of the problem might be actually the girth, the gauge of the string. It might just be too thick. If I had a thinner one, then a, a small knot could go over that the bobbin end of the drive band easier. Anyway, I have got a whole bunch of dirt and string and wool that has built up. And so I'm going to take some mesh, some fine mesh, and just scrub it. And the reason I'm going to use the wet mesh is because it'll kind of get into the grain of the wood and um, get more than just that fine dirt off. And what I'm going to do, most likely, is just take it apart scrub it down really good. I also have a dollar store basting brush, which I don't know. I don't know if that's the right tool to use or not, but um, maybe a little hand, uh, uh, what are they called? A fingernail cleaning brush, you know? But I think this is gonna get down into my crevices a little better than that would. And then once I have it super, super clean, Oh, by the way, if you have wool and fluff stuck everywhere on your spinning wheel while you're spinning, all you really need to do is grab a little piece of wool and the wool will actually go along because like attracts like and the wool will go along and pick up all of your fiber off your spinning wheel or off your clothes. So. Once I have that all finished, um, I did not put a varnish on my spin spinning wheel. I just put some wax. And so once you have waxed it, you have to, if you want to varnish it, then you have to sand your spinning wheel down past the wax before you can varnish it. So what I like to do, because I didn't want it varnished, is I every once in a while when the when the wheel starts to look really dry you just have to take more wax only if you can get it open mm, it smells good this one was made by magical moons on Etsy and it's made by Carnaba and lavender spinning wheel wax and it'll be a solid brick of wax that then you just take off with your fingers and you rub it into every single tiny crevice of the wheel and just buff it in. And so I'm really excited to kind of get the spinning. I haven't been spinning for a couple days. I got the last sweater that's going to be coal. I got it spun and I haven't spun anything since then because I really just felt like I was being too hard on my spinning wheel to keep um, spinning with it when I hadn't waxed it and I didn't have any drive band on it. So we're kind of waiting on that. In the meantime, I've been knitting lots of gloves, hats, socks. And I have a lot of work to go on the coal, so it's not hurting anything that is sitting here. But I did want to get um, some of my Angora fiber from the rabbits, which is in this box back here. Um, I wanted to get it carded and start spinning it because I wanted to kind of experiment with the texture to find out how I wanted to make the hats. I'm kind of thinking what I really wanted to do was a fat single ply because it'll have more cush to it. But you kind of have to have a really fine tight twist on Angora, so that's probably not going to be a possibility. So anyway, I have so many things to experiment with right now. Oh, the other thing was I got, because again, I wanted to experiment. I got a drop, <coughs> a 
a drop spindle off Etsy that is made by a girl that um, owns Angora's and this is the drop spindle she uses. It is very, very light, very small, and it's a top whirl. The top whirls will allow you to spin longer and will spin better for your really fine twists, fine fibers like Merino and Angora. So I have some nice thread started on that. Kind of trying to give my hands a rest with other things, like to have lots of different projects. And I got that drop spindle from, oh, let's see, Tina's Angoras on Etsy. T I N A S Angoras. Tina's Angoras on Etsy. So, um, lots of things on Etsy. Um, I kind of got introduced to Etsy from Nature's Bath and Beauty. And then I started looking around at what there was. And oh my gosh, all these products that are handmade are so much better. So much higher quality than what I could ever get from a commercial real retailer and cheaper. So I've had a lot of fun on Etsy lately. Um, having just kind of saved some pennies here and there kind of to do maintenance on the wheel and to um, experiment with some fibers. I have a whole bunch of fibers I'm wanting to try out because I want to make sure the hats that come to you guys are really, really soft. So that if you have any misconceptions about wool being scratchy, they'll kind of put those to rest. So I'm working really hard. I'm really tempted to buy some um, cashmere or silk or some more merino to mix the angora with just to make them really luxurious. But that's going to have to be a little bit in the future once the spinning wheel is back up. So we will talk to you guys later.